Good morning, it's Alex Woods here. I'm a civil litigator. I'm currently bringing numerous claims on behalf of the Joe public against lenders for the mis-selling of pain protection insurance. Now, uh, the news is, as you will have uh, you would have noticed from the uh, rows of empty shelves behind me is that we're now moving to a new law firm. Uh, we've parted company with the old firm, Newman's LLP, and we're moving to the new law firm in Gough Square, just north of Fleet Street, which is a very exciting move. And, I, and I, genuinely, it's a very exciting move because they have been in negotiations, in negotiations with them for a number of months, and they want to get behind the unit in quite a major way and invest in the unit in the long term. Um, no, I cast no dispersions on Newman's LLP, uh, it just wasn't their cup of tea. Uh, after all, running pain protection insurance cases isn't everyone's cup of tea, and uh, so horses for courses. So I'm very excited to be going to the new firm with uh, my administrative paralegal assistant, Sebastian who's also going with me, and they've also got the resource to slightly beef up the operation to perhaps four or five people. So we have what I kind of originally envisaged uh, 18 months, two years ago, which was a, a proper unit, not just a one-man band with an assistant. So we signed contracts this week, which is, we signed contracts on the 19th of September 2011, so now, now begins a bright new age in the life of this project to set up a financial irregularities unit. So uh, uh, I'm not going to repeat myself, I'm going to move on, I'm just going to cover three areas in this video bulletin which uh, the first thing I'm going to do is to introduce myself to a new category of viewer to the video bulletins and then I'm going to go on to talk about the, the structure, the business structure that I envisage for this uh, new unit and then I'm going to finally conclude with a case update uh, and emphasise the success really and trumpet the success really that, that we've been having in terms of running these pain protection insurance and other related type claims through the courts. So the first thing to do is to introduce myself to a potential new category of viewer to these video bulletins which is insolvency practitioners and specifically insolvency practitioners, any of you out there who are wearing the hat of an IVA supervisor and you're um, representing debtors and you are you know, running an IVA fund, uh, an individual voluntary arrangement for anybody out there who's not an insolvency practitioner. These have been a really, I think, quite a successful way of dealing with the problems that uh, the problems of debt, and a relatively new invention. Um, in brief, they run for approximately five years, and the creditors. Uh, it, it, it's um, it's an alternative to having to go into insolvency, um, and the creditors accept a discount to their to the money that they're owed, commonly. 40 pence in the pound, 30 pence in the pound, they accept, and providing that 75% of them agree to that, they accept to take a um, reduction, and in turn the insolvency practitioner you know, sits the debtor down, I imagine, says to him, look, what can you afford monthly payments for five years, and make sure that they, so it's quite a, uh, a, a combination of you know, legal skills, technical skills, professional skills, and people skills. And, and um, saying what you know, what what can you afford, what you can com commit to, and then presumably they then decide on that basis what you know the structure of the fund, and you know what percentage of cut reduction in their in their debt the creditors are going to take. Wouldn't that be the perfect instrument to apply to uh, to Greece, Italy, and Portugal, and all those other? Um, defunct or defuncting European countries. You know, why can't um, the European lot um, just simply ex accept that it's a big problem, accept that they need to create a second tier of countries as far as the EU is concerned, who need to have you know, proved themselves to, to, to be running successful businesses as countries um, before they 
you know, graduate to a first tier. And I think that the sort of things that the European Union should be looking at is what insolvency practitioners are doing with IVA funds, which is saying to all, not just all those countries who've put in money, but also all those private banks that have put in money, um, say to them, look, you have got to take a hit. What can Greece afford? Um, it'll be, you know, per month. Um, you are therefore going to have to take only 40% of, you're only going to recover 40% of, of your loans. Anyway, um, that, uh, uh, that, that's the sort of thing that I think should be applied to, to the European problem. And so there you go, you get a bit of free economic commentary on the current um, banking um, credit climate. Um, now, I, um, why I'm interested in solvency practitioners is because, and I'll come on to the structure of the, the new business with the new firm, Ferguson LLP will be the new firm, and we will be, uh, the unit will be called Redwood Legal, a division of Ferguson LLP. Um, so we will be a sort of a standalone business within a business, and part of the deal has given me a certain measure of autonomy to run the unit in the way I think best. We would like to focus on insolvency practitioners. I've discovered, I'm afraid to say, by step, over, so just clearing the office and um, heading up to Gough Square, um, I would, uh, I have to, I'm afraid to say that over the last 18 months what I've realised is it's very difficult to run a successful business simply direct to public for a kind of a boutique, some kind of quality high-end operation like ours it's it, we are, because we aren't generating factory loads of claims. It's very difficult for us to uh, to make money, frankly. And I've spent a lot of my time on the telephone with claims management companies or with directly with consumers. And I have spent time up front. It's no win, no fee. So this work isn't billed to anybody. I've spent time up front talking to people and um, you know, helping them with their problems, and I felt a little bit like a charity worker. Now that's fine, but I didn't want to, you know, this is my charity work, producing video bulletins for what I hope is an informative website and financial regularities. But uh, I, uh, you know, and, and it's, it's good publicity and marketing for me, so it's a good thing to me, for me to be doing. But I never wanted to be in the charity sector. I wanted to run a successful business. I just wanted to run a successful legal business that focused on, you know, claims of real merit. And it seemed to me that, um, you know, my conscience could sleep happily alongside, um, could sleep happily with the knowledge that I was moving into a, a sector which I could make money by you know, representing people who've got genuine, genuine claims. Not necessarily just consumers. I'm not a consumer um, crusader. Uh, just anybody or any company or any small business perhaps who've been ripped off during the boom times. Even a bank, you know. So um, that's, um, that, so the, the structure of the new unit will not involve working directly with taking calls directly from the public uh, or really doing much with the claims management side either. I mean, I won't, because I'm a lawyer and I have to act in the best interests of my clients and because, you know, just if the phone rings, you've got to take the call and you try and help somebody to you know, as, much, as much as you can um, within constraints. But um, I've realised that this, basically that's not the thing for me to do. If you are a consumer with a small value PPI claim, it's best either to handle it yourself, or if you want the headache taken away, to find a claims management company, a reputable claims management company, to handle the claim for you. Don't forget you can put the claim through the Financial Ombudsman's Ombudsman Service. Um, so I decided, um, and I've realised really over the past two years, that it's best for me to be working with fellow professionals, insolvency practitioners, and I've discovered that insolvency practitioners have a lot of uh, debtor clients in IVAs 
and on average there is something around well I'm not going to I'm not going to um, divulge commercially sensitive information but I'm more than happy to talk to people on, on, on the phone about it but there is uh, there will be a number of payment protection insurance claims on a debtor's file, a single debtor's file, and don't forget debtors can have as many as 10, 20, even, I've even seen a sheet with 30 different types of debt, credit cards, fixed term loans. So um, that is, so I'm now working with insolvency practitioners, I'm already working with one in uh, Gravesend, I'm going to be moving on to working with another one in London, and I brought my brother into the business who, uh, who runs his own company, to, who's based in Colchester, to help with marketing to insolvency practitioners. Because I have now really thoroughly examined this uh, business opportunity or this business model, and I think it could work extremely well to the mutual benefit of both insolvency practitioners and of us, a law firm. So the new structure will be to um, not turn myself into a big factory, but to have a claims processing presence around the core litigation unit. So Redwall Legal will handle those complex claims, high value claims, claims where the lenders are being difficult or intractable. That will be the financial irregularity unit called Redwood Legal, which will be housed under Ferguson LLP's roof in Gough Square, right next door to one of the barristers that I regularly, regularly use in my cases. Um, and, and then around it, and I'm thinking not uh, around it, we'll have a claims processing um, division. And I and it will be called something like, name to be confirmed, but Redwood Legal Assist. And we might have a little tag saying, enhancing IVA funds. And we will, over the next three to four years, seek to build relationships with a select number of insolvency practitioners in the greater London area and in the south, um, perhaps southwest, uh, not the north, um, maybe, uh, the lower end of East Anglia, I don't want to tread on a colleague's shoes, a solicitor in Norwich who's working in this area too. So probably Greater London in the South. So that's what we'll do. And um, we will... Uh, I'm fond of a, a model of 12 insolvency practitioners. Um, it could be 36 or 48, depends. But going forward, that seems a manageable number for us to handle. If it then expands, and then we could have franchises of Redwood Legal Assist dotted around the South. Let's say a satellite office in Reading, in Croydon, in Colchester, in Plymouth. Um, just with one or two, two people in a little office, or even working from uh, an office at home where they uh, process payment protection insurance claims that have come, come to them by way of an insolvency practitioner with whom Redwood Legal, the financial irregularities unit, have already formed a strong relationship, hand gesture, demonstrating strength. Um, and I'm serious about the strength thing because I want to develop a financial irregularities unit in the very long term. That's what Ferguson want too. We don't want to be um, fly-by-night factory cowboys who come in, clean up like some great big fishing trawler and then depart. We want to build, which is not a bad model, I'm not casting aspersions against that model, but it's not the model that I'm interested in. So, um, and I think the model that I'm interested in also suits more the spread of insolvency practitioners in the South and the Greater London area. I suspect there are very many more insolvency practitioners um, but are of smaller size. Whereas in the North of England, where a very respectable company is doing this, equity in finance, successfully. They are covering, a, you know, a, in the north of England, you tend to find the bigger factory type outfits of law firms and claims management companies where obviously the overheads are low. So that's the business model. 
and um, we're going to, you know, we're, we're, we open our doors for business this week. Um, so please do get in touch with Redwood Legal, a division of Ferguson LLP, if you're an insolvency practitioner and you're interested in forming a business relationship with us for the purposes of enhancing your IVA fund, and I can send you some literature on that. This video bulletin is turning into a bit of a plug. Um, so I shall move on to the third category. So that's, that's the move. Um, this is the empty office on Southwark Street that we've served notice on. We move out of this officially on the 20th of October. I would have loved to have used this uh, for a processing office, but I don't think it's going to be uh, cost effective um, at central London prices, and I've just not got the cash in the bank at the moment, unfortunately. Um, so, to close, I just wanted to give you a little bit of update in the cases. I'm off to Croydon County Court after I've finished this video bulletin to represent one of my first and, dare I say, I was about to say favourite clients. He's a challenging client, he's got a lot of character, he's a determined individual, he's a black cabbie, and um, he's facing repossession proceedings and we've been defending him against iGroup who've been bringing repossession proceedings and we claim that they've missold payment protection insurance um, and it's been a little bit of a dud case because it transpired warning to solicitors out there thinking of getting into this sector it transpired that 10 years ago when he took out the loan and the PPI he cancelled the PPI and he's just forgotten he just forgotten that he cancelled it but the bizarre angle on this case is it nevertheless appears he got very angry in 2000 about PPI that he'd noticed on the paperwork. They said, well, we'll process the loan and then you can cancel it afterwards, which he did. And it now appears that, that he never received the cheque. So uh, it's given the case a fresh complexion. Um, other cases, I really glowing reviews of my own performance as a litigator um, with a limited number of cases but we have had good success in a credit card case recently relatively small claim this £1,700 which Lloyds have agreed to I've got uh, it's gone over the other side but I've got a letter from Lloyds the solicitors there um, I'm quietly confident about our black horse case where I'm again defending re re repossession repossession proceedings and um, we had a relatively good result last week in another credit card case where we've managed to get an order from the judge disclosing the commission payments that the credit card company, Creation, took on a credit card that they, uh, a store card in fact, that they flogged to our clients back in 1993. Could be a very large claim. So that's the, that's, that's the, the move, that's the update, that's the way the new business structure is going to work. And I would finally say that uh, it's such a good business model um, for me, in my view, because we have on the one hand got the litigation unit, so if lenders are proving difficult, and even post-judicial review, I'm afraid they are, subprime lenders, broker loans, you know, banks that aren't in the public eye, uh, PPI claims that are of much higher value, but your lender is trying to get you to take a smaller sum by way of full and final s settlement and set off, i.e. you're in debt and they want the PPI set off against your debt, not allowed. So um, for all those problem areas, it's essential to have a law firm, but as I say, and I'm gonna do the old hand gesture here, um, the good thing about the Redwood Legal is that we'll have both a claims processing arm um, and we'll have, you know, the bully boys, the lawyers to get heavy if that is required. Well, that's all for now. I'll, I'll post again in a few days or weeks' time once we've moved to the new firm and um, you can perhaps meet some of the lawyers there and the staff there. Okay, well, that's all for now. Signing off.